Chapter 3, Valentine's Day Disaster. Carrie. Carrie wasn't sure how long her robe was, but she was definitely at the end of it. She didn't really know what that meant, but it sounded good, and she had heard her parents say it. Her dad would come in after waiting in the car for too long and say, Elizabeth, please hurry, I'm at the end of my rope. Carrie heard that a lot. Or when her mother was burned something in the kitchen, she would say, I am at the end of my rope here. Carrie felt like she was almost out of rope because it was Valentine's Day and she couldn't decide what to wear. Yes, after days of listening to Ashley talking about her party and hours of giving her help, Full tips. Family Fortunes had finally arrived. Ashley's party was going to be a hit. Their mom had taken her to buy streamers and banners and balloons. And the whole family had half cut out paper hearts, which turned out better than Ashley's first idea of snowflakes. All the pieces of a great party were in place. Last night, all the Baxter kids had worked out on their Valentine's cards. A few of them had the box kind from the store, but Carrie made her own from cardstock, pink for the girls and dark blue for the boys. Now it was she. It was only she could. This now it if only she could decide what to wear. The bus was leaving in forty minutes, and her bed was covered in outfits. She let out a deep breath and grabbed her old journal and a pen from the desk. Sometimes a girl just had to put her thoughts on paper. She flicked to the first clean page and dropped to her bed. Today is already a dis- disaster, and it's not even eight in the morning. It's Valentine's Day, and I don't know what to wear. Plus, Jason Jennings has been talking to me way too much all week, and I don't want anything from him today. If he gives me a giant box of candy in front of Ariel like he did last year, I'll be so embarrassed. Cards from Ariel. That would be better. I just want to enjoy the day. I see Valentine's Day is the worst day of the year. Carrie, breakfast! Her mom's voice from somewhere downstairs broke the moment. The boss lifts it. Plus, hurry. Panic ran through Carrie's veins. Coming! She returned to her journal. More later. Gotta go, Carrie. Carrie slid the little book in her backpack and faced the mess around her. Pants, skirts, dresses, shirts, sweaters. It was like a tornado that had some come through that destroyed her room. And destroyed her room. Good thing Ashley was already dressed and downstairs. Okay, Carrie, just pick something, something. She blew a piece of hair out of her face and put her hands on her hips. She wanted to wear a dress, but she didn't want to freeze. And she definitely didn't want Jason Jennings thinking she wore a dress for him, of all things. But if she wore jeans, then which jeans? She rummaged through the pile of clothes, this parrot. Ashley walked into the room and completely ignored the disaster of it all, which was one of the things Carrie loved about Ashley, even if she didn't understand it. A master room never bothered Ashley like it bothered Carrie. Ashley walked to her bed and threw her backpack over her shoulder. Her her hair was pulled into a high ponytail. Mom said you need to come down and eat or else. Ashley turned and looked at Carrie. You're still in pajamas? Ashley's laugh sounded friendly. You can't wear that. I'm not. Carrie looked down. We, she, she wore a Johnson Elementary School t-shirt and fa- f- flannel bottoms. I can't decide what looks best. You look good in everything. Ashley flashed her sister a nervous look as she grabbed her backpack. All I know is you better hurry. The bus isn't going to wait. She headed out the bottom door. Carol rolled her eyes and flopped it under the pile of her of her bed. She yelled into her pillow, This is the worst day I ruined. It felt like God it felt good to get it out, especially since no one was listening. But just then a knock sounded at the door. Carrie rolled her over to see her mom standing there. Hi. She was leaning against the door frame, her arms closed. Crossed. There wasn't even a hit of anger in her smiling face. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Carrie tried to smile too, but she felt embarrassed. You heard me? I did. Her mom came 
closer and sat on the edge, the edge of the bed. But she took Carrie's hand in hers. Ashley said, "You are stressed." Carrie couldn't hide the truth a little. You want to talk about it? Her mom was in no hurry, even if the boss was coming soon. Look at this. Carrie motioned to the clothes piled up around her. I don't know what to wear. Carrie, honey, she, her mother sounded extra kind. It's not the clothes that matter, but the person in them. Carrie knew this was true, but it didn't help. She stood expressed. Mom, the word came out like a cry for help. I want to go. I want to look good. This is a big day. She shot her another look at the clothes covering her head, covering her bed. Nothing's right. Maybe I can help. Calm and gentle, that asked her mom as she joined in the search. Are you trying to look good for the party? Carrie caught her mom looking at her, and she could feel herself turning red. Yes, but not for Jason Jennings. She focused on the floor at a stack of jeans. I told you about him, right? You did. Her mom held out a top. Carrie shook her head. Jason keeps trying to talk to me, and everyone says he's going to give me a special Valentine today, which is excellent, exactly what I don't want to happen. She threw the hands in the air, very dramatic, and flopped on the bed again. But if it does happen, and if everyone is looking at me, then I should at least have the right outfits. Not something that makes me look tan. She looked straight at her mom. Does that, mean, does that make sense? Of course. Her mother nodded. We're going, to, we're going for tan. Is that it? Yes. Carrie stood again. It was hopeless. Just then, her mom held up, up a very... Of a pretty white sweater and a pair of dark jeans. How about this? Her mom looked at the clothes, says, and uh, back at Carrie. I say they're perfect. Wait, I should have studied that. Actually, yes. She took the items from her mother. How has she missed this? They are perfect. Now you'll be the best dress girl in fifth grade. Happiness came over Carrie and sunshine on a rainy morning. Now the whole day was better. Thank you. She took the clothes in her arms for everything. She, her mom stood and ran her fingers through Carrie's hair. You're a rare and beautiful girl, Carrie. The clothes don't make that any more or less true. She smiled again. Now get dressed. The boss won't wait. Her mom left the room and shut the door. Carrie dressed and hurried downstairs. She grabbed a muffin and walked to the bus with her siblings. They made it just in time. Once they were seated, everyone was talking. Even the air felt like it was full of excitement. A wonderful, bossy sort of Valentine's Day thrill. Carrie clutched her bag of handsome cards. Oh, sorry, handmade cards. Next to her on the seat, Ashley looked over and nudged her. You okay? I guess. Carrie gave Ashley a weak spell. I just don't want Jason to do anything weird. You know, boys. Yes, I do, Ashley lost. Most of them are great, but every now and then... Carrie laughed and looked out the window. Sure, she saw that Jason was funny. And okay, he was the fastest guy in her class. But she didn't want a boy liking her in the first grade. Too young, plus three... Of the girls in their class already teased her about Jason. Apparently, Jason was going to, going around saying he saw Carrie was pretty. It was all too much. Carrie just wanted to enjoy Valentine's Day with her friends. Carrie actually tapped her shoulder. She turned to her sister. Yes, I think that's a perfect outlet. It's gonna be a good day. Thanks. Carrie laughed and sighed at the same time. You have her, your supplies for the party right here ashley held up two bags lydia is helping me set up at lunch i can't wait the rest of the bus ride was full of loves and hopes for valentine's day after an earlier talk with her mom and now with ashley carrie arrived at school feeling better than she had since she rolled up in fact every student at johnson elementary seemed to be in a good mood. Nothing could ruin this day now. Not even Jason's gym. 
Genix. Finally, after lunch, Miss Pike announced it was time to give a Valentine's. Carrie joined the others, finding their bags of Valentine cards and passing them out. Each student's desk had a paper basket on top of hold, on top to hold whatever they were given. I made my, my I made mine my, myself. Brady held up her cards with hand drawn hearts, butterflies. The words were read. You're extra nice. Happy Valentine's Day. Looks good. Carrie gave her friends thumbs up. I made mine too. Jessica Holland sneered at both of him. Jessica always seemed sort of mean. She chuckled at Carrie and Brittany. My dad would never let me make Valentine cards. He bought me the most expensive ones at the store. Stir. She held up a bag bursting with oversized chocolate bars. Also, everyone gets candy. She looked Carrie and Brittany, Brittany up and down. I bet you two didn't bring candy. Jessica, really? Carrie stared at the girl. That's not nice. The girl rolled her eyes. I'm just saying she walked away, her voice trailing behind her, probably looking for the next classmate to tell. Carrie was not impressed. Sorry, Brittany, she's so rude. Carrie put her hand on Brittany's shoulder. It's fine. Carrie, Brittany took a slow breath and stared at Jessica across the room. Something must be wrong with the girl. That's what my mom always tells me about mean kids. Carrie smiled. Me too. She says her people hurt people. Exactly. Brittany nodded. You have to feel of sorry for her. The girls joined the rest of the class and passed out their cards. The excitement in the room made it impossible to worry too much about Jessica's mean words. Carrie could hardly wait to open her valentines. When they returned to their seats, Carrie found a card sitting on her desk a few inches away from her basket. hand round flowers and hearts decorated the envelope. Please. God, not from Jason. Carrie looked around as she opened it. Sure enough, it read, Happy Valentine's Day to a special girl, Jason. A faint feeling came over Carrie. This could not be happening. She ignored Jason all week so this wouldn't happen. But still, he hadn't gotten the message. All of a sudden, she noticed Jason. She was, he, was standing, he was standing a few feet away. And he was holding a teddy bear. Happy Valentine's Day, Carrie. He handed the, her the so stuffed animal. From the back of the class, Carrie heard a few students giggling. giggling. She looked that way. Jessica was whispering to the girls around her. Carrie, Carrie cleared her throat as, as, as she took the bear. She needed Jason to understand. She could almost hear her mom telling about her dad. Be yourself. That's what her mother would say. Carrie found her smile. Thank you, Jason. I only want to be friends. Just so you know. He smiled. Oh, I do. It's okay. He held a pen and now he took the card from her desk. She crossed out something and wrote some new words. When he handed it out, this time it read, Will you be my friend? Everyone's watching. Carrie could feel that, but Jason only smiled and gave her an itchy shirt. You could give the bear to your little brother if you want. Suddenly, Carrie didn't care what the other kids said or whether Jessica Holland was making fun of her. Jason was only being nice. She took the bear and nodded. I'll do that. She grinned at Jason. Friends, definitely. Great. Jason looked around. Sorry for the big sense. I told everyone I just wanted to be your friend. He gave her one last smile. See you around. Sure. Relief filled, filled Carrie's heart. See you. Jason returned to his feet, said, finally, eventually Mrs. Pike took the front of the room and the moment was behind them. Carrie couldn't be, have been happier. Brittany leaned over. You okay? I am, Carrie smiled. I ran his friends. Yes, Brittany was on Carrie's side of sure. Exactly. Carrie promised herself she'd write about this in her journal later. She had been worried about nothing. Jason just wanted to be her friend. Nothing more, which meant maybe she would even keep the teddy bear. You could never have too many friends. The end of chapter 3. Chapter 4. The Perfect Party
Ashley. Ashley couldn't believe the party was finally here. She and Lydia, with Mrs. Miss Wilson's help, stretched crepe paper in rows across the top of the classroom, and they tapped pink and red and white balloons in every corner. It has to be perfect. Ashley tied a string around a group of balloons near the doorway. It is, Miss Wilson laughed. You girls went way beyond what I ex expected. Over the last few nights, Ashley and Lydia had created paper bags for the classmates. So when Ashley finished with the balloons, she set one bag on each desk. Then Lydia sprinkled confetti hearts around each one, so every desk was super decorated. Next, Miss Wilson left to get plates and napkins for from the cafeteria. While she was gone, Ashley and Lydia took the large hearts the Baxter family had cut out and tapped them in the walls and the blackboard. Finally, they hung pink and white streamers from the top of the doorframe, so every boy and girl would walk through them after lunch. And last of all, the girls hung a Valentine's Day banner with the name of every student in their class. Ashley and Lydia stepped back and examined their work. You did it, Ashley. Lydia pushed her glasses up higher on her face. Then she looked around the room, clearly happy. Ashley turned to her friend. We did it. She gave Lydia a high five. Ashley served fight the place. It was a wonderland of Valentine's Day perfection. Miss Wilson came in through the pink and white streamers and gasped, Girls, this is stunning. How exciting. She hurried the plates and napkins to her desk. I have a little gift for you too. She pulled out a little box. What is it? Ashley jumped in place a few times. Surprises were the best. Hold on. Miss Wilson laughed. She opened the box and pulled out two little hard pins. These are for you girls, the best party makers in fourth grade. She held the girls pin in girls pin the hearts to their sleeves. They're beautiful, Miss Wilson. Ashley looked from their teacher to Lydia. It's official. We really are extraordinary. The bell rang and Miss Wilson checked her watch. Do you need anything else? Just as the teacher finished talking, a group of boys came into the classroom. Eric Powers in the light. Late, Ashley winced a little. As far as she was concerned, that meant just one thing, trouble. Touchdown! Eric yelled before he even came to the room. Then he tore through the doorway, ripping down most of the pink and white streamers. The boys who followed brought down what remained. Miss Wilson rushed to the pile of fallen streamers. She looked crushed. Boys, you look what you've done. I talk with your boys you both in a minute. She began to pick up the streamers lying in a mess on the floor. It all happened so fast that Ashley didn't have time to be calm and breathe like normal. She picked up a handful of streamers and walked it to Eric. How could you? How, how could you? We didn't know Eric threw his hands up like he was innocent. But Ashley wasn't buying it. You didn't know? Really? Well, you want to know something now, Eric? She threw a wad of streamers at his feet. You just ruined Valentine's Day. How could Eric do this? Ashley marched back over to Lydia, who was standing still, like she was too so shocked to move. Ashley put her hands on her hips. We were we worked so hard. Yeah, Lydia sounded like she might cry. Everything is ruined. Ashley took a deep breath. She was mad, but she didn't want the day to be ruined, no matter what she had just told Eric. She looked at the boys who were now getting lecture from a lecture from Miss Wilson. I hope they get in big trouble. Ashley thought they deserve it. Eric came over, followed by the other boys. He looked right in her eyes. He was trying to be serious, but she could still see his smile. He wasn't good at hiding it. I'm sorry I ruined your decorations, Baxter. He swayed back and forth. Now I gotta stay after school every day next week and organize Miss Wilson's bookshelves. Ashley almost smiled at the news. Still, Eric did the same very sorry. It's Ashley. She crossed her arms and I'm, I don't believe you. She turned her head away. He didn't deserve her attention. Hey, Eric took a step to her. I'm sorry, really. He tried to look right at her. I wasn't careful. Trust. He held out his hand. Ashley stared at him. 
she was still really mad, but it was important to forgive people, even enemies named Eric. Fine, I forgive you. She uncrossed her, her arms. She shook his head and then walked to the damaged zone. Lydia was already there helping Miss Wilson. Boys, their teacher stood up. Come help, all of you. The boys did as they were told. They gathered the streamers and in a few minutes they did them tap back where they belonged. Lydia leaned close to Ashley and whispered, I can't believe you forgave him. It was the right thing to do. Ashley picked up and ripped banner and picked up the ripped banner which had also fallen when the boys rushed in. Come on, help me get this tape up again. Here, Miss Wilson bought some wider tape, and together the three of them tried to rehang the banner, but it didn't look the same. I'm sorry, Ashley. Miss Wilson put her arm around Ashley's shoulders. The room still looks amazing. Lydia nodded as she looked around. It really does. They were right. Ashley had to agree. The other kids wouldn't notice the banner and the streamers being slightly off. It was still going to be the best possible Valentine's party, and the class could have perfect fun with the perfect decorations because no one and nothing except God was perfectly perf perfect. Ashley said had taught her that. She smiled and took a deep breath. She, she felt better already. Finally, the other students came back from lunch. Every one of them walked through the streamers slow and careful. Miss Wilson stood at the door and made sure they all got to their seats without taking any of the other decorations down. Ashley watched her classmates. Then she looked at Lydia. They like it. Lydia was studying the other boys' angers too. They love it. Sure, Ashley's decorations didn't go so planned, but the party was still a success. And her game pin and arrow on Cupid was a hit. Eric Powers was way far for, off from the target. Ashley and Lydia couldn't help feeling good about that after what happened earlier. Earlier, at least, at least I, at least now I know why you wouldn't couldn't walk through the door without tearing down the streamers. Ashley said the quiet, said the quiet words so only Eric could hear him. You're a little clumsy. You got me there, Beck, sir. He grinned at her. I did say I was sorry, you know. I know, she leave her chip, but maybe you shouldn't have done it in the first place, unless you really are clumsy. I'm not clumsy. Eric rolled his eyes. I'll pay better attention next time. At the end of the day, Ashley believed with all her heart that it was the best Valentine's Day party, better than she and Lydia had dreamed. Ashley knew it had to it had a bit to do with her attitude. She thought for of something else her dad always said. Sometimes you just need to be like a dog and let the water roll off your back. And her dad was usually right. As she sorted through her Valentine cards, she noticed that she didn't get a special one like Carrie was worried about. Ashley was so glad. Better to have lots of friends in her class. It would be so embarrassing if someone like Eric Powers ever actually liked her and gave her some special Valentine. No, thank you. Also, the day was great because of the heart pain from Miss Wilson. Their teacher sang them again as the bell rang that afternoon. It was a beautiful party, Miss Wilson looked at the two of them. You and Lydia were just the right people for the job. As she lifted her hand to give Miss Wilson a big high five, then she changed her mind. Maybe not for the teacher. Instead, she gave Miss Wilson the biggest smile she had. Outside, she made, met her siblings by the bus. Everyone had a bag full of cards and candy. They climbed on and took their seats. This time, the students were quiet. The energy from the morning was all you up. Looked at Ashley on the shoulder. Did you get a lot of Valentine's? His mouth was full of chocolates, Valentine's, with an N. Ashley threw the letter N in the air with her finger. And yes, I got a few. She held out the bag of goodies. Look like you got candy. We did. We had the baddest party. Luke took the bag and rummaged up three, grabbing a handful of chocolate. Look at all this. Don't eat it all at once. Ashley laughed and then she turned to Carrie. She was that to hear how her sisters that they had got. Well, what happened? You first. Carrie bounced a little on the basket. Tell me about your party. Did everyone love it? They did. 
Ashley raised her first into the air, fist into the air. It was perfect. Ashley felt her smile fall off, except the part where Eric Powers and his football buddies tore down half the decoration before the other kids got to the classroom. No! Carrie's eyes grew white. That's terrible. Yes, Ashley did not have anything else to say. It was over and she wasn't going to be mad about it anymore. Miss Wilson helped us fix it, so everything was okay. Ashley searched her sister's eyes. Your turn. First, Carrie unzipped her backpack and pulled out the teddy bear. I got this from Jason. Yes, just what you were afraid of. Ashley couldn't believe it. What did he say? He said he just wanted to be friends. He, she looked at the bear and then I could give the bear to Luke. In the seat in front of them, Luke spun around. You got me a bear. Carrie laughed. I'm going to keep it, but... Ashley lowered her chin and raised her eyebrows. You're keeping it? That's what you do, right? Carrie looked at the bear again. If a friend gives you something, you keep it. Ashley was shocked. Since when is your when is Jason your friend? Ashley couldn't believe what she was hearing. Jason was always digging holes at recess. He smelled like eggs. No, I don't like him. Carrie shook her head. He's nice, that's all. Carrie looked at Ashley as a friend. So then what's wrong? Ashley felt like Carrie wasn't telling the whole story. She was so quiet. Carrie thought for a, for a bit. She did that a lot. Then she looked at Ashley. Well, at lunch, he was talking to Jessica and Katie. So it felt like he didn't really mean it. Like he has lots of friends, nothing special. Ashley crossed her arms. How could a boy do that for to her sister? Give her a big fr friend gift and... Then be friends with other girls at lunch. So rude. Some boys ruin everything. Lydia said that earlier. I think it's true. Carrie giggled. Sometimes I guess. As they got off the bus, Ashley spotted their dad waiting by his car. Daddy! Ashley ran and jumped into his arms. He picked her up and spun her around. My little princess. Their father was tall and strong, full of energy and happiness, like always. He sat Ashley down and then he picked out Carrie and then Aaron and treated them the same way. Luke was lost and their dad hugged him and gave him a high five. Then one at a time he handed Ashley and Carrie and Aaron each a long steam stand red rose. Happy Valentine's Day to my favorite girls. He threw Erin into his arms. I gave one to Brooke and to your mother earlier. He looked at Luke and pulled out a chocolate bar from his pocket. And I couldn't forget about my little man. Happy Valentine's Day, Luke. Luke's eyes grew wide as he grabbed the bar. More candy. Thanks, Dad. He tore open the wrapper and started eating. Erin started his hospital work batch. Did you have lots of people today, Daddy? Yes, their father nodded, confident. God always gives me eyes to know how to help them. Ashley smiled, proud. Her dad was the best doctor in the world and really good at helping people. Guess what? Ashley's dad's eyes danced from her to her siblings and back again. He was really excited. I'm taking Erin and Luke to the movie, and Mommy has a surprise for your older, your older girls at home. Ashley was confused. A surprise? Better than going to the movies? She put her thumb and a finger on her chin, like she was solving a mystery. The movie sounds fun, Daddy. Can we go? Dad winked at her. I seen you like this surprise. He helped Erin and Luke into the car. Then he kissed the girls on their cheeks and sent them on their way. Ashley looked at Carrie as the car drove off. I guess we should see what mom's doing. The girls walked down the road toward their house, the snow crunching under their feet. Ashley thought about the surprise. Maybe it's brownies. No, Carrie kept her eyes straight ahead. She makes those all the time. True. Ashley kept walking, waiting for other ideas to come. Of course. That has to be it. Carrie stopped and looked at her. She blinked a few times. A horse? Where would it sleep? Ashley did not hesitate. The murder, of course. I don't think so. Carrie kept walking and Ashley stayed 
right with her. You need a bar for a house, horse. Yeah, but I think we want to a horse for a year at least. As she passed, I was going to name her Frenchie. Also, I've been thinking, and I want our soccer team to call the Mighty Dolphins. First, Ashley Carrie shook her head. Mom did not buy you a horse. A smile flashed on her face then, and second, I love the name Mighty Dolphins. Even though she brought up the team name, Ashley couldn't think about so- soccer. Not when she was wondering about the surprise. She said, "Maybe it wasn't horse." So that what was it? When they made it inside, the house smelled wonderful. It liked vanilla cake. And pretty music played softly from somewhere. Ashley and Carrie took their shoes off, and Carrie hung her backpack. Ashley did the same. She wanted to be extra careful not to accept her mom, especially when she had a big surprise plan. Just then, Brooke came through the door. She looked like she had been crying. I saw you. Be home by now. Carrie spoke first. What's wrong? Everything. Brookie hung her bag on the third hood and sniffed. I get. I guess in middle school, not everyone gives Valentine cards. Her eyes filled up. I didn't get a single Valentine from any boys in my class. I'm the only one. What? Ashley couldn't believe it. Why? They don't like me. Her voice was frustrated and said, "Obviously." Ashley didn't know what to say. How could that happen? At Candy Middle School, everyone loved Brooke, even the teachers. She was the perfect student, like just like Erin. I'm sorry, Karen reached for Brooke's head. That's rotten. It really is. It doesn't matter. Brooke sniffed again. I hate Valentine's Day. Ashley held out her bag of candy. You can have some of mine. Brooke let out a laugh, and that was more like a cry. Thanks, Ash. She took a piece of chocolate. Where's everyone? Just then, their mother came into the entry. She didn't notice Brooke's expression right away. Instead, she motioned, motioned to the three of them. Follow me. She looked like she was holding in a secret. Happy Valentine's Day, girls. Whatever the surprise was, they were about to find out. The end of chapter four.